We call it the Oculus Quest on steroids due to its high resolution display, its more powerful processor and the better weight balance. But we couldn't prove it without our hands on it. Hey, Tech here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. Let's welcome the Pico Neo 2i, the next generation standalone headset from Pico. I'm using this from a while now and tested a lot to finally give you my review about this very interesting headset. Is it really the Quest on steroids? Should you keep an eye on it? And about the eye, what about the eye tracking? Well, let's discover it together. Let's get into it. Now, I have to say that I'm very impressed by this headset, and yep, I'm saying at the beginning of the video, mostly for the attention to details that comes already up from the unboxing. In the box, you're gonna find the usual things, starting with its two 60OF controllers, the headset over here with two cameras on the front, the little grill for the magnetic tracking. On the top, you're gonna find a USB Type-C to recharge it, the power button, and on the right, the select button, back button, and a home button. And on the bottom, the 2.5 millimeter jack, the micro SD expansion, because this comes with 128 gigabyte, but you can expand it other 256 via micro SD and the volume rocker over here. Then you're gonna find the usual power brakes to charge your headset and controllers, one Type-C cable and, talking about details, one Y Type-C cable for the controllers, so you can charge them together. Now, I know this is a pretty easy thing, isn't it? It's just a cable, but why it's the first time that I find one like this in the box? It got my attention. Now, as always, I'm gonna divide this video in different sections because there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of new things over here. We're gonna talk about the comfort, the screen, the software, and the new addition, the rarest thing on the market right now, the magnetic tracking for the controllers and the eye tracking, things that make this headset completely unique. But now let's start talking about the headset itself. This is a standalone headset. That means that it contains hardware needed to run your experience. Kind of the Oculus Quest, but here they took the lesson from the most famous VR headset on the market that is pretty front heavy and they worked on it to make it better, more comfortable. And you can already tell from the design, the Pico Neo 2i is made in our plastic and it weighs 360 grams, but it's very comfortable. That thanks to the use of the very big fluffy paddings on the front in fake leather that are easy to clean. The front one, by the way, is also removable and because they move the battery on the back of the device to balance the weight is such a good way that you'll be able to keep it on for very long sessions. This headset is using an arch strap design that you can open and close through this knob on the back. The only thing that I don't really like much is the strap on the top. It's made in this rubber material, uh, like a silicon material, and well, it has just three way to adjust it, so it doesn't really fit every head out there. It's weird because they didn't go for the Velcro like everyone else on the market, but the good thing is that the weight balance is that good that you're not really relying on the top strap anyway, so few for that. I haven't much to say about this topic anyway. It doesn't feel like a navy device at all when you have your head on it, even if it has a lot of technology in here. The Neo 2 runs on a Snapdragon 845, the generation over the Quest processor to give you a perspective and that's much needed to run the 4K display at 75 Hz over here. Now, I have to give prompt to what they did over here. The 4K LCD display with RGB pixel arrangement is crystal clear. I was really impressed by this. Colors are on point. It makes the screen door effect pretty much irrelevant and the resolution breed clarity. This is also thanks to the lenses, custom Fresnel lenses that are very sharp. I didn't notice any god rays or glare here and the FOV is around 101 degrees. Nothing crazy, but in line with what we saw from the competition. It feels like a wider than the Oculus Quest, for example, but it's not all perfect, of course. I noticed some chromatic aberration on the edge of the visual. This is usually fixable by software, so it's not that alarming and it lacks of the IPD adjustment. The sweet spot though is wide enough with these lenses, but if you don't sit right in the IPD range, well, it might create some eye strain. That also due to the focal point that feels a little off in some cases. Also, that should be fixable by software, by the way, but well, that's something that I noticed, so I wanted to share it with you. 
Now, the screen is certainly one of the best I ever tried. Yep, even above the Valve Index, beside the problem that we talked about. And it would be amazing to display your games, apps, and experience. But before to talk about the software, I want to talk about the tracking, because here things are really particular indeed. Now, the headset used two different tracking solutions, the usual inside-out tracking with the two cameras on the front, these cameras also give you the pass-through and the ability to create a boundary system in a similar way to one we saw on the Oculus Quest and a magnetic tracking with this little bar over here. Well, the headset creates a magnetic field around itself to find the position of the two controllers and that means that with this method will not suffer of any occlusion. The controllers will be tracked in full 60 OF even at your back. And that's pretty amazing. It works pretty well. So if you're using a bow or reaching for your backpack, that will not be an issue. And this kind of tracking also makes possible to have smaller controllers. And talking about the controllers, they look like two little ones, but they pack a lot of buttons, all the buttons needed for your experience. I actually took them in the wrong way. Here we are. Here you have the thumbstick, A and B, home, back, and grip buttons. Yeah, the grip button is just the button, unfortunately. And of course, the triggers. I wasn't expecting much from these controllers before using them because they don't look premium at all. The buttons feel a little mushy and stuff compared to the Oculus solution, but they are very ergonomic and compact more than what I would expect. And of course, they get the job done. Weird note that I want to add is that they get pretty warm while using them, probably for the tracking solution. So let's get back to it, because of course, not using cameras, there is a trade-off. The precision is good enough to play games or interact with menus, but it's not really the one-to-one -one that you would expect. There is also some added latency, and you can feel the controller is wobbling a little, guessing the position. Now, I was able to play every game, including Half-Life Alex, thanks to the streaming assistant. More about that later, by the way. But it always felt a little off, for the controller at least. The end tracking works pretty well, like you would expect. So if you're looking to the perfect precision, well, this is the trade-off. Do you prefer the perfect tracking in a limited area in front of you, or are you okay with the tracking everywhere? Well, let me know in the comment below. So after trying it a lot, I still prefer different solutions for the tracking, but I appreciate the courage over here to try something new, different. At the end of the day, it's not perfect for gaming, but it works very well to interact with the software here. And that's the segue. Yeah, we're using the Pico digital platform running on Android 8, a custom software from Pico itself. And because the headset is pretty new, well, you can tell that is still limited, but it offers a lot of flexibility at the same time. The headset is focused toward business and enterprise. That means that you will not find all the games that you're looking for, not yet, at least. And even, unfortunately, trying to load some Oculus Quest APK here, well, didn't work. I mean, I could install them without any problem. At the end of the day, Quest and these both run on Android, but I wasn't able to find anyone functioning from here. That means that devs are going to have to rewrite the software for this headset to be able to use these controllers and to use this amazing resolution. Now, you can find already apps like Firefox that works like a charm over here, and the app that I use the most, probably the streaming assistant, because here, like the Oculus Quest, you'll be able to stream games from Steam VR from your PC to the headset, like it was a PC VR headset wired, so with the USB 3.0 cable and also wireless, and this time natively, without any third-party app to use. I tried both and I have to say that everything works pretty well. Steam VR even recognizes the controllers and you can even see them in games. So it doesn't feel like a workaround. There's still, of course, some latency over here, exactly like the Oculus Link. The streaming is also not running at full resolution for the limited bandwidth, of course, of the cable of the wireless connection, but the 4K screen for sure gives a great experience overall. So should you consider it to use it just uh, as a PC VR headset? Well, probably not. Uh, a native PC VR headset will always give you a better experience, but it's a great addition for sure over here. Now, the other apps that I used a lot over here are actually the apps to feature the eye tracking, this new technology here integrated by Toby. Now, what is eye tracking? Well, basically, you're gonna have numerous cameras around the lenses facing your eyes and understanding the position of your pupils. 
that can be used in many different ways. One is the foveated rendering, to be able to focus the full resolution just where you are looking at, allowing a frame rate raise up to the 66%. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see this in action with any app available. It would be awesome, by the way, to see this in the streaming assistant to be able to really push the resolution where you're looking at over there, but maybe it's gonna rhyme in the future. At the end, the hardware is there to support it. But the other big function available is making your avatar look more lifelike because after going through an easy calibration process, apps are gonna be able to understand where you're looking at and make it useful for interaction, like aiming without moving your head, like in many different demos available that you're seeing right now, or for social interaction. One of the most interesting things for sure. Now, I always believe this is really what is gonna lock the next generation of VR, and this is how things get started, with the headset built to let the devs build on this hardware. And that brings us to the conclusions, by the way. As I said at the beginning, I'm very impressed by this headset. I see a lot of potential over here. And after using this, going back to the Quest really feels like going back to a previous era. So yep, I think that the Quest on steroids statement still stands, but that doesn't mean that we should all go out and buy it because this is not built for us, at least not yet. There is a reason why I had to go back to the Quest because here, as we said, we are not gonna find many apps, games or stuff to do. The hardware is impressive, even for the price that is $6.99 for the regular version and $8.99 for the eye tracking version. That is still cheaper than $1,000 for the Quest version for business. But again, we can't really use it much yet. This headset is built for businesses that want an amazing screen to represent their experiences, for devs that they want to make their games available for different platforms to be ready for the future and for enterprises to maybe gather data through the eye tracking and build applications in the best way possible or understand where is the real interest in people while approaching something. And of course, many other case scenarios, but if your focus is gaming, well, we are not there yet. I'm so glad I was able to receive this headset because this is like a confirmation that VR is not just moving, it's running. One of the reasons why I started this channel is because I'm super passionate about all the new tech packed in these mold devices. And well, this is pretty much the representation of all the new tech that is gonna arrive in the future. I tried the future today and I really hope that it's gonna arrive to all of us as soon as possible because if this is the situation, well, I'm sold. Now, if you have any question about this headset, please let me know in the comment below. I could talk for hours about this headset. So if you think that I left out something, please let me know. As always, guys, remember to share the video. And of course, if you liked the video, like. That's really appreciated. It helped a lot to reach more people. If you didn't like the video, dislike. It's fine too. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And if you really love the channel, well, you can support the channel over here with the join button like the super nice people over here and if you are interested in the t-shirt well we have the store down there with super nice t-shirt the back to vr t-shirt and the sticker and well that's pretty much all so again like dislike subscribe i see you guys next video thanks for watching ciao